All right, in this lecture, heteroscedasticity part C, I'm going to show you how to actually test and correct for heteroscedasticity using the R statistics program. And so we're going to do a couple of different ways. First, we're going to do everything kind of by hand, the long way, so you can really see what's going on here. And then I'm going to show you how to use some add-in libraries to make this easier. Uh, just to clarify, we're going to do some testing of heteroscedasticity by hand. Uh, and then um, using some libraries, I'm going to show you a quicker way um, to test for heteroscedasticity using the Bruce Pagan test. And then I'm going to direct you to a little program that I wrote uh, in combination with another library that you can install in R that will correct for heteroscedasticity after you run a regression. And so some preliminaries here. Uh, if you do not have the R program and you want to play along at home, make sure you download and install R. Um, look back at uh, Berkey Academy list of videos if you uh, need help doing that. One of the first videos on uh, introduction to R, I show you how to do all that. You need to also install two libraries or packages, and I'll briefly show you how to do that in, in R as we go along. And I also, um, a little program that I typed up, uh, you need to go to www.ncat.edu slash tilde Berkey M and click on a link called Econometrics Data and then click on this link, uh, file called whitefunction.txt and let me show you real briefly here. Here's my website. If you go down here to um, Econ 512 Introduction to Econometrics, Click on Econometrics Data, and I have a file, just just a simple text file here called whitefunction.txt, and click on that. And the reason I'm doing this is I don't want you to have to type all this, um, and I'll show you what you can do with this. This is a little function I call white core for white correction, and let's go ahead and do this first off. Um, how how you take a program like this and get it into R is just to copy the text. And you can right click and go copy. And then once you are in R, if you have not done this, you only have to do this one time um, for your R program, and then it'll be there forever. Um, just paste it. Right click, paste. And it didn't give us any errors. And so now we have a function in R called white correction. So let's get started analyzing some data. Now we're used to um, this data set that I've talked about a few times is uh, called MASS. Uh, well, it's a package called MASS. There's a data set in there on cars. So um, before we get started, if you haven't installed these libraries uh, that we need uh, called car and LM test, Click Packages up here on the uh, top of the R window and Install Packages and it's going to ask you to select a mirror site and uh, choose one near you and once you do that it will come up with a list of hundreds and hundreds of R packages and the two that you want are lowercase car car and lowercase lmtest lm test. Now I've already installed these, so I won't do this. Now um, a package that's already in R by default is called um, capital M-A-S-S, -S, and it has a data set we're going to use. So we're going to load that. So library, open parentheses, M-A-S-S, -S, will give us access to this data set that we want to use. Attach capital C-A-R-S 93. The first letter is capitalized, nothing else is. Now we've attached the data. Um, now we can do a summary of it. Summary uh, cars 93. And we can see all these variables. We've done this before uh, in earlier lectures. Now what we want to do is run a regression and see if we have heteroscedasticity. And so um, I'll just run a random regression here and call this uh, regression uh, cars.reg1 
equals LM and I'll explain price like we've done before tilde and um, we'll use horsepower and um, for example type of car and let's do a summary of that and it tells us the slope estimates etc and here's our F statistic and our R squared and it tells us that this regression is explaining something not all of our slopes are, are zero because this p-value is very small um, tells us horsepower is statistically significant and possibly also mid-sized car we're not going to dwell on that though because we're talking about heteroscedasticity so the first thing you want to do to check for heteroscedasticity is just plot your regression so plot open parentheses cars dot reg one and there are two different graphs here that will come up so hit enter again where you can look at heteroscedasticity this is the residuals versus fitted plot and the residuals are on the y-axis predicted values on the uh, x and this red line going down and coming back up is telling us that maybe there's a little pattern on, in our residuals here we can also see this cone shape that's typical for heteroscedasticity uh, residuals are all close to zero here and getting bigger and bigger fanning out um, getting larger in absolute value as we go away from uh, smaller to higher values um, this is the normal plot it has nothing to do with heteroscedasticity but this one does the scale location plot basically makes our residuals positive standardizes them takes the square root um, and the fact that the red line starts off small and gets higher as you go from left to right tells us that the variance of our residuals is getting higher for um, higher predicted values this is the most common pattern you see so we probably do have some heteroscedasticity here now how do we do a formal test let's do a Bruce Pagan test by hand and in order to do that we need the squared residuals and to get the squared residuals we can uh, I'm going to name a new variable here um, car dot residuals squared R E S S Q the name isn't important equals residuals of the regression I just ran cars dot reg one and I want to square that carrot two and so I have a new variable we can just look at them here um, car dot res squared and there are my squared residuals just a long list of them a Bruce Pagan test says let's use that as a um, dependent variable in a regression so let's make another regression here um, car dot BP reg for example equals LM car dot res squared that's the dependent variable we're trying to explain and we're going to use the same variables uh, horsepower and type we just ran a regression now let's do a summary of that regression now I'm tired of typing uh, s, uh, the whole word summary so let me just type this uh, shortcut s equals summary and then just, I can just do s car dot bp reg here's what we're looking at the, the um, basic test for uh, heteroscedasticity is to look at this p-value right here now what this is telling us is using this um, Bruce Pagan test for heteroscedasticity the p-value of 0.16 says there's not strong convincing evidence that we have heteroscedasticity even though we saw a little bit in those plots now why wouldn't you find evidence it could be that the um, we haven't used the right variables that are related to heteroscedasticity uh, we only have two explanatory variables here even though type is a dummy right so we've actually got a few more um, it could be you know look our, our r squared's small here which which is also telling us that this these variables don't explain a lot of uh, the variance in the error terms 
Now, what if we wanted to do a white test instead? Remember, a white test takes the same um, regression that we just ran and adds not just horsepower and type, it adds horsepower squared uh, and type squared. Well, you can't square type since that's a dummy variable, so that doesn't make any sense. Um, but we can also interact horsepower and type. So plus horsepower um, times type, and that will um, take care of interacting them for us. Now let's do a summary of this and see if this uh, expanded test finds evidence of heteroscedasticity. Uh, the p-value 0.559. No, still we're not finding any evidence of heteroscedasticity with the white test. Um, even though we saw some on a plot, it's not strong enough uh, to reject an all hypothesis of homoscedasticity. So we're okay there. We wouldn't actually want to fix a problem that we're not sure exists in this case. Um, but again, with only a couple of uh, explanatory variables that aren't carefully chosen, you know, maybe what we're doing is doesn't make sense. But if you don't find evidence of heteroscedasticity, don't fix it. Um, now, let's suppose we had found um, evidence of heteroscedasticity. Um, let me show you a quicker way to, to do the Bruce Pagan test. That library I wanted you to load earlier um, called LM test. Whoops, I spelled library wrong. Um, library LM test. Ooh, I did, actually didn't install it. Give me a second. Okay, I paused the video while I downloaded and in, installed that. It pretty much does it by itself. Let's try that command, uh, loading that library again. Library LM test. And I spelled it wrong again because I hit the up arrow. Okay, library LM test. Um, now there's a function here called uh, BP test. If you just type BP test, it will automatically run the um, Bruce Pagan test for you. So the name of our regression up here was um, the original regression, cars.reg1. And so cars.reg1. And here it um, calculates that p-value for us without us having to manually run that auxiliary regression. It just spits out the p-value. And again, in this test, the null hypothesis is homoscedasticity. With a high p-value, you don't reject it. So homoscedasticity. Um, now, another library we need, and suppose we did have heteroscedasticity and we wanted to fix it. Um, we shouldn't fix it because we don't have it, but suppose we did. Remember, we pasted that um, that function earlier from my website here called white correction. Since we've done that, we ha now have a new function called white correction. Uh, this white correction function requires another library to be installed and loaded. It's called CAR, so library... C-A-R. Let me see if I've installed this one. Yes, I have. And uh, in order to run this function, you have to first load the library car. And now we can run my white correction program. White core. And then the name of the regress regression that we ran before, uh, cars.reg1. And this will correct for heteroscedasticity using um, what white calls HC0. And what it does is it changes the standard errors to the corrected standard errors and gives us new T stats, new P values, and spits out all the other information we need. So that's the easy way to fix heteroscedasticity if you have it.